Hello! Uh, in this part of my tutorial I'm going to show you the structure of this character template and uh, we'll show how to add a new library elements. So let's go to the character sample directory and uh, examine the resources folder. Uh, this uh, folder contains uh, the library elements that are common for all copies of our characters. For example, in uh, the previous part we have created uh, this copy and uh, this copy of character talking. So, if we will change something in the library, uh, then those elements will be automatically updated for all the copies. Okay, so let's see what uh, we have there. We have foods, uh, you see different uh, uh, shapes are put into keyframes with a distance of 12 frames. We have uh, hands. Uh, they are organized the same way. Uh, every new hand uh, shape is displayed with uh, a distance of 12 frames relatively to previous and uh, every hand shape is residing in separate group and it is uh, just uh, displayed in the uh, proper moment of time how to make this happen I will show a little bit later okay and uh, we have a lot of uh, library files for head. Uh, first of all, we have a head zero. This is a front view of the head. Here we have uh, uh, the head and uh, different mimic shapes are animated with the distance of 12 frames again. But in this case, we are not switching different uh, different groups. We just uh, modify the existing vector data uh, to get the different shapes. Here we have uh, labels which indicate uh, which uh, mimic shape should be at uh, this keyframe. It is very important to uh, have every mimic uh, shape at a particular keyframe, at a corresponding keyframe. Otherwise, we automatic lip sync won't work. Also, you can enable the KF marks. So maybe it's more comfortable for you. And uh, but just don't forget to hide uh, this widget when you're done with the editing. And also it's possible to choose language. For example, we have second language. It's Russian. Okay, but English is generally fine. Okay, so this is a front view of the head, head zero. And uh, for front view of the head, we have separate uh, file with eyes only because we need uh, different uh, shapes for the eyes. Uh, open eyes. 
close it eyes left right up and down it's very important that uh, the eyes should be at the same place as they are in the uh, in the head because they will be overlaid and, uh, in the template on top of this head and uh, you can notice also that uh, when a character uh, for different uh, mimic shapes of the character we're also changing his eyebrows a little bit and that uh, makes him look a little bit more realistic when we make animation okay so for we have a front view of the head and uh, next we have uh, three quarters view to the head head 45 and this is a left view view from the left it have absolutely the same structure the same oh it's in russian okay we can switch the language yes absolutely the same we have uh, the same mimic shapes at the corresponding moments of time. This is it. And uh, in the same way, we have uh, eyes for the left view. It's absolutely the same. And uh, of course, if we have a uh, if we have a three quarters view from the left, we should have a three quarters view from the right. And uh, there is a trick that generally you don't need to pro you don't need to produce a, you don't need to produce to make a, a new view for this because generally it's okay just to import the left view left view and uh, just put a stretch on top of it this approach is generally works okay it's a little bit let's change margins okay so generally it's okay just to import the left view and uh, put a mirror on effect on top of it. Of course if you have your character non-symmetrical uh, then uh, you have to make uh, the right view uh, separately. You have to make a right view from scratch and uh, put uh, all the mimic shapes manually this is more work but uh, that's how it is and uh, also we have a profile view it's uh, arranged in the same way okay it's a little bit we have a problem with uh, uh, with the time margins here okay let's fix it okay yeah it works the same way and uh, We have also eyes for it, and we have uh, right view, which is also a mirror of uh, this one. And we have three quarters view from behind, three quarters view for right, and uh, view from behind. Uh, generally, we don't use them, but I've put them here just in case if we will have additional views of the character besides the side and front maybe from behind etc it's just for the future 
Okay, this is the structure. And you might notice that we have a two files for foots and two files for hands. A hands and hands C, foots and foot C. Uh, this is uh, the hands C is a copy of hands and foot C is exact copy of foots. Uh, this is done because uh, of the limitation in synfig because we can if we have one file imported twice as left and right hand then we cannot uh, make it uh, display uh, different shapes if we will have this file imported uh, twice then uh, it will uh, display it will display uh, the same shape always uh, so that's why as a workaround uh, we have uh, a copy we must have a copy at the moment and uh, if we edit the hands or the general workflow is to edit foots or hands C file and uh, after that uh, run the update lib.sr script uh, this uh, script will mod will take this file and copy it into this and take this file and copy it into this so every time when we edit hands or foots.c we have to run uh, this script this is a workaround so let's uh, Suppose we have we want to add a new hand shape to the uh, library of hands. Uh, let's see. Uh, for example, we would like to add this one. So generally, we just sketch the basic shape in my paint or Gimp or Krita. And uh, when we open uh, the image and uh, trace it with the outlines, yes. Um, here I will not show. I will not. I'm not going to show how we will trace it because I think is uh, is a little different topic. Uh, and uh, I have one image already uh, vectorized. The question is how we are going to align it to the character to make it look properly with proper position and uh, rotation. So here is how our workflow look like. We just copy the vectorized part, vectorized part and we go not to the library but to the character uh, to the character here okay and uh, we just click into any hand you see we <coughs> we are inside of the switch we need to go outside of the switch and uh, past our element on top of it you also might notice that uh, the hand is changed its color that's because uh, my hand is white and we have this layer applied on top of it this layer applies a skin color so if you will change it it uh, will change the skin color for all elements of the character this is very good because we can have a uh, characters uh, with a different uh, skin colors okay i can put it on top and it will become white okay so next thing what i would like to do uh, is to change uh, line thickness I don't know what it should be 
I think something like this. Or maybe yeah. okay. I think this is fine. Then I select the whole hand and uh, rotate it and scale to the proper size so it will uh -huh. the line thickness is too much still okay I think it will be okay like that yeah okay so when we have a lignit the uh, hand inside of the character template now we can cut it from here and pass it direct directly into uh, into the library uh, okay let's do that cut uh -huh. and uh, go to the library of this character and paste it at the bottom inside of the switch group mm -hmm. we will not see anything because at this moment of time only the first group is displayed okay past it at the bottom it's very important to keep the order let's rename it okay so let's go to the last yeah and let's add uh, another keyframe uh, we need to we don't really need to add a keyframe but it's uh, comfortable to see uh, where the last uh, oh it's crashed how oh, sad okay let's try okay As I've said, we don't really need to add the keyframe because the things will work anyway. Anyway, but uh, it's very good because we can see uh, the last uh, where the last pose, uh, last hand shape is. Okay. I think uh, I need to align everything again. Well, it's okay because you have a, a chance to see the whole process again. Uh, okay, let's um, click here, go out of the switch, last on top. Uh, change the thickness of the line okay what it was something like this if I remember correctly control A rotate Too small, I think. Mm, almost. Okay, 
I think it's okay to keep it like that and uh, we just copy and uh, yeah past inside of the switch and the bottom 25 yeah now we need uh, to make it uh, appear at this moment of time uh, and uh, what we need uh, just uh, look at the previous groups and you will see that it have the jobs converted into the range type and uh, it have a minimum value set at the same number with minus sign exactly like here minus minus 23 and uh, the link is linked to the uh, time switcher exported value so let's uh, do the same convert uh, into the range first set the minimum value as minus 25 and uh, connect link to the time switcher and you see now our hand is appears at the proper place now uh, but the previous shape is still visible to uh, make the current shape replace the previous uh, we need to set the blend method to straight okay so now we have a new hand shape added I haven't removed it from here we have uh, but uh, remember uh, that we have edited hands.sif uh, so we will have a new hand shape available for the um, for the um, left hand only uh, so to make it available for the right uh, I need to uh, I need to wait a moment I need to run the update lib sr script so let's do that yes it's updated hands it's detected the changes in hands and updated the hands C file. So let's uh, close file and reopen it. Now we should have this uh, hand shape available uh, for both hands. It's on somewhere here. I need to keep the direction to select the, pro <coughs> the proper hand, hand shape. Yeah, here it is. And let's check here. I don't really know which direction I should go. I guess it's not that. Uh, yes, in the opposite direction. Probably I should put some hints here. The point. Oh, yeah, this is it. So we have a hand shape added for both hands. Uh, this is a workflow. Okay, let's reset them. And uh, yeah, so uh, this is how we add a new uh, hand shapes. 
If you will go to the workshop uh, directory, you will see that I have uh, more characters here and uh, like this one. And uh, it have uh, the same uh, library of elements. It's pretty much the same. But uh, in fact, we have uh, every character uh, his own library. This here. And here, every character has have his own library of hands, heads, and foots. But uh, it's really common that I would like uh, to have uh, some characters uh, to have the same library of hands because generally all male character might have uh, the same hands. Uh, the same set of hands. Uh, for female character it may be a little bit different set of hands and foots but uh, for all female characters uh, it's better to have them uh, shared. So when we have many characters uh, it's uh, very important to uh, have an opportunity to manage their hands and foots uh, in that centralized way. Uh, that's why we have following agreement about uh, the directory names. Uh, first of all, we have every character directory starting with the character word. Here we have characters. So uh, we have a special script uh, that uh, updates the... Uh, we have common resources shared, uh, locate, uh, stored in the shared resources directory. And here you can see we have mail, foods and hands and we have female foot and hands and then uh, we have a script that uh, takes uh, the fem those set of hands and propagates uh, and copies it them to the corresponding characters so that's why uh, that's how a script detects if the directory is a character or not it just starts with a character word and uh, also we have uh, several types of character and the type uh, is an extension of the directory. For example, all the characters here are, have male type, so uh, the hands and foots uh, will be copied from this directory, male. And if we will have uh, a female character, when we have character, so name dot female, and the script will copy a female set. Uh, yeah, yes, female, female. It's a little bit different. Uh, female set for this character. Also, we can have uh, different types. Uh, of the uh, hands and foot, for example, monster, and uh, we just add in a new folder, call it monster, and uh, we can copy and paste here. And those elements will be automatically copied to all characters that have monster extension. So mm -hmm. it's is a pretty flexible uh, system. Okay, let's, let's tell it the monster. And uh, also 
you can see there is a character without extension that means that uh, uh, it have its own set of hands and uh, it is not affected by this uh, when we run this script it happens sometimes because we might have uh, some characters with a special design like this maybe this character is familiar to you okay. it is based on the same template and uh, you can manipulate it in the same way you can see that uh, you can see that uh, it have this character have completely different uh, set of hands so in this case there is no uh, reason to have uh, his resources stored here but in most cases it's very good to have a centralized uh, library that uh, is uh, influences the uh, particulars, uh, particular set of characters uh, so the general workflow of adding a uh, new hand or foot uh, for the character with a type we are not adding it uh, into resources folder uh, we adding it into the shared resource we just editing the shared resources mail hands and then we are running the update character scripts and then we have all library elements updated here that's it that's uh, what i wanted to talk about for today and uh, next time i'm going to show you how to uh, use how to create a new character base it on uh, our uh, character template creating a new character uh, is not really takes uh, much time if you have a particular skill so for example you can create some something like this mm, for this character it took uh, about two, two or three hours to make it so that's all for now, thank you and see you, goodbye.